Yeah. So good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, my name is Francesco Petruccione, and I'm the interim director of, of NITEX, and, and we are still without a logo. Sorry for that, but we hope to sort it out soon. So it, it's my pleasure uh, this afternoon uh, to introduce to you uh, Professor Langa uh, Kumalo from uh, uh, Sadila, which is the <clears throat> uh, South African Center for Digital Language Resources based at the Northwestern uh, University. Yeah? And, and, and Sadila is one of the, you might know or not know, one of the 13 research infrastructure uh, that were established <clears throat> uh, in the South African Research Infrastructure Roadmap. Yeah? And uh, all, all funded by the Department of Science and Innovation. Yeah? Professor Kumalo uh, is the former director of language planning uh, and development. Uh, he's an ex-colleague at, uh, at UKZ10. Uh, he studied uh, linguistics at the University of, uh, of Oslo, where he graduated with, uh, with his PhD. And, uh, and previously with an MPhil uh, at the University of Cambridge, yeah? also, in, uh, also in linguistics. Yeah? So we are very lucky to have him with us today. He's the current chair and coordinator of the Africa Union Is Is Zulu Language Commission. Yeah? He's an expert in corpus linguistics and computational solutions for the African Academy of Languages, uh, which is a part of the African Union. He's also the chair of the University of South Africa, USAP, a community of practice for African language uh, teaching uh, and learning. <clears throat> uh, he's a member of the SARIA mentioned above planning and management forum. He's also a member of the common language resources and technology infrastructure, which is a European research infrastructure for language resources uh, and technology. And he represented South Africa uh, in, the, um, uh, in the Oxford Global Languages uh, program of, of Oxford University Press. Yeah, he's also a member of scientific board of, uh, of various centers, and, uh, and he is the president of the African Association for Lexico Lexicography, AfriLex, and, and he served in, on, on many, many, many committees that I, I, will, I, I will stop reading now. The, you, you find them on the, on, on, on the announcement, yeah? And uh, um, maybe, maybe we have to mention that um, <clears throat> uh, he's also a member of the SADAC uh, Indigenous Knowledge System, Scientific Community of Practice, and an award-winning author in intelligent text processing and computational uh, linguistics. Yeah? And, and we are really very fortunate to, to have him uh, with us this afternoon. Yeah? Um, with Professor Kumalo, you see also uh, Dr. Juan Stein, yeah, who is the director of operations at, at Sadila, and he kind of agreed to, to moderate the questions during and after the, 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 the talk of Professor Kumala. So if you have questions, please make use of the Q&A facility that you see at the bottom of your, uh, of your Zoom uh, window. And uh, since we are not um, too, too many, um, you, we might also ask you to raise your hand. And if we have time, we can uh, allow you to, we give you the rights to, to, to speak and ask your question uh, in person, yeah? So Dr. Professor Kumalo, uh, people are here to listen to you, <laughs> not to listen to me, yeah? So uh, if, if you would like to, to start your presentation and, and, and sharing your screen, um, you're, you're most than welcome. So we are really looking forward uh, to your talk. And, and in particular, we are really looking forward to strengthen the links between NITEX and, and, and your institution, yeah? Because we both have computational somehow <laughs> in, the, in the mandate, yeah? So that, that's, that's really very nice, yeah? Thank you, thank you very much. So you're welcome to start, yeah. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Francesco. Uh, I will share my screen um, now. Mm. We, no. I can't see it now. Not yet. Yeah. Yes, I will open it now. No, no. It's opening up. It's, it's slow. Yeah, no problem. Okay, now we are in business. If you press now the full screen button, we are 100% in business. Yes, you should be able to see the full screen now. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Can you hear me clearly, uh, Prof. Francesco? We, we, we don't see yet the full screen. We see your presenter mode because we also see your next slide. But, uh, oh. but it. Okay. Um, um, I want you to see the full screen. Uh, then you can uh, you go to, to if you go to the very very bottom there is the the, the full screen button uh, just under your logo. <laughs> yes, I it, think. Yeah. Can you see it now? Okay, that's perfect. Hundred percent. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. There we go. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you so much, uh, John Stein, for chairing the session. Uh, colleagues, good afternoon and uh, welcome. I'm going to try and speak to the strategic function of Sadila and how this is key to the development of computational resources for African languages uh, in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. So I'm going to quickly uh, discuss in brief uh, what SADILA stands for, what its mandate is, and then move on to its key mandate, that of uh, developing resources for the 11 official languages. And the resources include HLT, NLP resources, and, um, and then because I'm trying to motivate um, the fact that the COVID situation uh, brings to the fore the question of developing resources for African languages, especially because it bids us to uh, teach uh, in, a, in an online uh, setting where digital resources are key to enable this online teaching. And then I'll uh, talk about digital humanities and our flagship program, the Escalator pro uh, Project at Sardila. So very quickly, what is Sardila? Sardila is one of the research infrastructures of the Department of Science and Innovation, which is part of the SARIL program, uh, that is the South African uh, Future Research Infrastructure Roadmap. It is hosted at the Northwest University and is funded by the Department of Science and Innovation. Sardila is the hub of the center that is linked to various nodes that assist in the development, research, and support of all the official languages of South Africa. Sadila therefore has a constitutional mandate to develop digital resources for all the 11 official languages. Because uh, South Africa has 11 uh, official languages, uh, the mandate is derived from the constitution and the constitution states very clearly that these 11 official languages must be developed in such a way that they derive a parity of esteem between them. So there is no lesser or more important language between these official languages. They are all supposed to be developed all equally and Sadila treats them as such because our mandate directly derives from the constitution. There has been varying uh, efforts to develop human language technologies uh, for all the official languages since the turn of the century. These efforts have been centered at the universities of Pretoria, Stellenbosch University, Northwest University at the CTEXT, and I particularly mentioned CTEXT because uh, we are going to see that it is one of our nodes. Um, and the uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, uh, CSIR for short. And these are the departments or divisions or units that have been developing hither to um, Sadila's establishment, human language technologies and natural language processing resources uh, at the inception of the uh, second century. However, despite this very uh, critical uh, milestones, these languages remain under-resourced, except of course for the English language. So we are therefore trying to develop technologies in the context of what we now very much familiar uh, with the fourth industrial uh, revolution. The fourth industrial revolution context um, has a clear characteristic, i.e. that of rapid 
rate of automation and interconnectedness and massive, massive information exchange and the integration of technologies into all the aspects of our modern lives. Uh, this includes uh, smart devices that use AI, machine learning and the Internet of Things. And of course, uh, the four IR uh, technologies include um, all those uh, things that are listed in that uh, uh, chart. This is a challenging context for the development of languages that are largely under-resourced because uh, of this rapid rate of automation and interconnectedness. And you're dealing with languages that are hitherto uh, uh, under-resourced, it becomes a massive challenge to uh, deploy technologies that can um, satisfy the need of all the 11 official languages. So what is the strategic function of Sadila? Sadila's function is to create, manage and distribute digital resources as well as applicable software to all South Africa's official languages in order to stimulate and support research across the academy in the areas of humanities and social sciences. It has two main programs. The first one is the digitization program, which involves the creation of relevant text, speech, and multimodal resources for the research and development of the 11 official languages. And the second uh, leg, which focuses on the digital humanities program that uh, focuses on research capacity in this area, which is uh, growing very, very uh, tremendously across the world and is slowly uh, growing across uh, the academy in South Africa. So Sadila's vision therefore is to stimulate and enable digital research and development in South Africa's 11 official languages to cultivate and grow the digital humanities scholarship in South Africa and indeed across the continent while creating synergistic uh, strategies with local and international partners for which uh, uh, we are here today to uh, create uh, synergistic relations with NITEXT, and we hope that we are going to achieve that. And of course, with other uh, similar or complementary infrastructures, and you had uh, Prof. Francesco making uh, reference to European uh, infrastructures that have similar mandate as SADILA. And we are actually uh, uh, working closely with these European infrastructures so that uh, we share best practices. So Sadila has a hub and spoke model. It follows that model. And this model simply means that there is a center which is at the hub at Pochefstrom campus at Northwest University and the six other nodes that are distributed across uh, the country. So currently we do have six nodes with different areas of specialization. The University of Pretoria hosts the digitization node. The University of South Africa hosts the semantics and terminology node. The Inter-Institutional Center for Language Development and Assessment, which is uh, a, a, a cohort of universities that uh, form what we call ISELDA, uh, focusing on the language development and teaching node, and the CSIR, the Council for scientific and industrial research um, are specializing in speech resources and technologies. CTEXT at Northwest University uh, specializes in text resources and technologies. And our newest uh, node, Stellenbosch University, focuses on the child language node. So Sadila and its node therefore have this uh, specialization project. And what actually uh, these entail, the digitization node entails digitizing text resources and other multimodal resources at the UP node, terminology development and word, semantic word nets at UNISA, learner corpora for academic writing and writing resources at the ISELDA node, which is uh, an inter-institutional uh, center. Transcribed speech corpora and automated uh, speech collection is the CSIR node 
and annotated text corpus creation and machine translation systems, uh, the remit of the C-text node. So Sadila has a proactive uh, program, a proactive effort to extend language resources to all the official languages uh, of South Africa. And you can see, uh, relate that to the node functions. It provides digitization support, not just to uh, the digitization node, but to other external institutions um, that are working very closely uh, with Sardila. It provides assistance in best practices and digitization efforts, and also in software development. There are also regular open calls for resource development and research for the academy to uh, apply and uh, Sardila uh, through its uh, committees, various committees uh, looks at these uh, open calls uh, applications and they go through a scientific process and we award grants to these uh, um, open calls in order for the research community to develop resources and or do research around the areas of uh, computational linguistics and digital humanities. And these uh, open calls cut across, as I've said, the entire domain of language resource and technology, including uh, digital humanities. So the COVID-19 uh, global pandemic. The global pandemic, which primarily affects health, has had a telling effect on many sectors, including the higher education sector. The global crisis has resulted in many countries taking unusual measures, such as closing schools, colleges, and universities in a massive lockdown in order to stem the spread of the coronavirus. So the higher education, uh, higher education sector, which we are active in, has also been compelled to come up with responsive measures to address the disruption of the academic programs. And there has been massive efforts to migrate online teaching and learning um, in a hitherto untested and unprecedented scale for most universities in South Africa. And I'm sure that even across the globe, um, and we have seen this, uh, uh, and for us that are working in uh, the language space, we know that this is a massive challenge because most African languages have no digital presence. They have no processed natural language data. They are in therefore in this sense, uh, resource scarce languages. They need computational solutions and funding resources in order to meet the exigencies that are brought about by the challenges of online uh, learning in the context of uh, COVID-19. So the migration of teaching and learning to remote learning via online platforms presents uh, further challenges to the teaching and learning of African languages. Because again, um, we know that we have characterized them as uh, resource scarce languages. The positive of the resources includes a lack of uh, exhaustive linguistic descriptions, the absence of large and specialized corpora and machine readable lexicons. And uh, this makes it a nightmare to develop uh, human language technologies and other computational resources for these uh, under-resourced uh, languages. So I want therefore to argue that Sadila can provide solutions to this conundrum and or is set up ideally as a national infrastructure to provide these kind of solutions to this kind of uh, uh, conundrum. It has the infrastructure to create, manage and distribute uh, digital resources. It has a DH program that can improve research in the humanities and social sciences. And it has the projects to reskill researchers and also students in the areas of humanities and social sciences. And what is left in the next half of the uh, um, uh, presentation is to show how this infrastructure works and to assess uh, together with you whether or not this infrastructure can meet the challenges presented by this uh, conundrum. In the areas of digital humanities, Sadila has a chair 
in digital humanities. The chair at Swadila drives the digital humanities scholarship across the country, and as I've said, indeed, across the continent through our uh, uh, conferencing mode, which uh, is associated with our, 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 our Southern uh, African Digital Humanities uh, Association, uh, DASA for short. And DH methods involve the use of novel computational methods, uh, both in research and teaching and learning. And these include computer software and corpora to solve research problems uh, old problems and new problems using uh, prisms that hitherto were not available to the humanities and social sciences. So to challenge, therefore, uh, existing theoretical assumptions using these uh, novel uh, theories, uh, sorry, uh, uh, tools that are, uh, come with digital humanities uh, methodologies. So one of the flagships that uh, have been inspired by the DH uh, portfolio is the DH uh, symposium or DH colloquia, uh, colloquium series at Sardila. These colloquium uh, were introduced uh, late last year and have been rolled out without fail every month. So they are held monthly and their aim is to illustrate what digital humanities is and what the applications are and how these applications can be accessible uh, throughout the academy by anyone and everyone who is available for reskilling and uh, uh, taking up some of these uh, novel um, ways of doing uh, scientific research. The colloquium series has generated a lot of interest across the academy. The participants are drawn from local and international researchers. And it is encouraging that they are young researchers from our local universities uh, as well that are keenly following these uh, colloquium series. The speakers thus far have been drawn from our local universities. Some have been drawn from across the continent and indeed some have come from Europe uh, and America. And our next one is tomorrow, which is presented by Martin Berker from UJ. Uh, sorry about that uh, on that uh, far corner uh, slide. Uh, and he's in the computational social science at the University of Johannesburg. And his title is Everything I Knew About Protest Was Wrong. So um, this is going to be uh, uh, our, our next uh, uh, colloquium, uh, if I'm not mistaken, according to our, our, our information on our website. And these colloquia, if you want to follow them and you have missed them, and I'm sure there are some of us who, are, who were not aware of them, if you go to our website, you can actually look them up and uh, you can even go back to the first one uh, that we offered up to the current uh, one that we just had uh, last month. And you can actually follow all of these. They're exciting. They are providing the, the, the community of uh, humanities and social sciences with new and exciting ways of looking at various types of uh, data sets and how these data sets can inform their theoretical frameworks. The second uh, uh, flagship project that we are driving at Sadila again to address the paucity of skills, the paucity of resources uh, that uh, uh, is faced by the, 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 the language community or the linguistic community is the escalator project. So what is the escalator project? The escalator project uh, seeks to derive an inclusive and active South African community of practice in the areas of digital humanities and computer science. We know that humanities and social science research and education are in dire need of strong and coordinated interventions to enable the pervasive adoption of digital research methodologies and practices. And over the past few years, several capacity development initiatives were implemented with various institutions and communities, but South Africa still lacks a national integrated active community of practice in this space. And the escalator pro uh, program is designed to actually uh, uh, meet the needs of this uh, community of uh, practice. 
So Stadila, through the escalator projects, seeks to drive the DH scholarship and uh, comp comp computational linguistics methodologies across the academy. It has uh, six uh, different tracks that are targeting different audiences. Um, and these uh, tracks are from your extreme left, the explorer, uh, the embarker, the enhancer, the enabler, the educator, and our special track, uh, 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 which is the empower track, which is focused on um, a designated group in our population, in our demographics, uh, and that is women who are uh, interested in growing uh, digital and or computational skills and uh, networks. And we are targeting this group because uh, we want to meet the needs of that demographic, uh, demographic uh, population. So the explorer and the embarker and the enhancer and the enabler tracks are all designed, they look carefully uh, on the participants, their background, and they're all designed to meet the necessary, the immediate requirement of those uh, that uh, want to uh, participate in these uh, um, uh, uh, program and the the, in, the the impressive thing about this is it does not leave anyone behind so no one can feel uh, left behind because you you go into a track that actually meets your minimum skill sets and your set uh, goals uh, and this is really exciting because we have already launched the empower track uh, we launched it in May of 2021. And we also have uh, launched the biweekly uh, enhancer track, which is focusing on uh, programming. Uh, and we have uh, cohorts from UNISA and UCT uh, for the Explorer track. We have cohorts from Northwest and UNIZULU and UNISA for the enhancer track. And we have the Empower track that was launched during the Women's Month in August. And uh, it drew participants, as you can see, from a whole gamut of uh, universities across the academy. And we are really excited that this um, uh, Empower Trek started off with this robustness. So another capacity at Sadila is the management and distribution of these resources and uh, that are created and all that are made available to the research infrastructure. And this also uh, gives uh, Sadila a strategic uh, a function uh, that it can, it, is, it can be assessed or can be seen to be an ideal research infrastructure to meet the requirements of um, the academy. So Sadila has the capacity to create, manage and distribute these crucial digital resources it has a long-term digital preservation and legal distribution of resources. And again, some of these are available uh, on our very comprehensive uh, uh, website. You can actually go to our website and browse uh, some of these resources uh, in our repository. It has open access as far as possible. Uh, data is provided with all sorts of provisionings, uh, indices for resources, downloads for certain uh, resources in our resource catalog persistent identifiers for long-term accessibility and referencing and standardized metadata. Also found at Sadila in our repository are technology portals, and these include simple online access to language technologies. And this morning, uh, actually, uh, John and his colleagues were busy uh, training uh, um, uh, in two workshops, uh, the Voyant tools and the Ellen uh, for a cohort of people that are interested in using uh, or upskilling or reskilling themselves using these uh, important tools uh, for research in the space of humanities and social sciences. And of course, we also support uh, for addressing legal issues related to some of these uh, resources. All that support is available again at Sadila. In terms of research support and training, Sadila has produced thus far 60 journal articles, seven book chapters, and 30 conference papers and research publications in the areas of NLP and HLT development, digital humanities and digitization, and corpus linguistics. 
And we offer also awareness and support for digital humanities as a research field in South Africa. And the awareness is of the resources that are available or research methodologies that we uh, uh, demonstrate. And these demonstrator projects are also uh, shared through various programs. And the Escalator project, project is now our net tent that actually facilitates all these uh, training uh, and uh, reskilling and upskilling programs. As, as, as the last next bulletin uh, states, we provide support for training activities. And I've met mention to the two workshops that we had uh, the Voyant and the Ellen workshops, and of course, the ones that we have been sharing with Nitex, uh, the carpentries. Um, we have been doing a, a lot of training on the carpentries uh, workshops. So, what is it that I want to inspire this discussion with the Nitex networks uh, and Sardila? Uh, I want to uh, look at AI and deep learning and how these affordances can actually bring us to the nexus that ties Sardila and Nitex. And I want to motivate it uh, so that, you know, going into the future, we can look at some of the areas and say, this is something that we can pick up with Sardila and uh, uh, drive as a synergistic uh, program. So exploiting artificial intelligence and, deep, uh, intelligence and deep learning, we can create novel computational models in the context of deep natural language understanding. And deep natural language understanding entails the development of monolingual, cross-lingual, multilingual, multimodal, context and situation aware, culture aware, and knowledge rich computational models that understand human language in a precise and semantically deep way from individual to population, from language development to language use, to language change, from individual spoken utterances to full speeches, from tweets to complex documents, from simple saying hello to complex dialogues. And we can actually use these affordances to achieve what is summarized in um, what has been motivated by the European Language uh, Project Consortium. And I think uh, with the basic infrastructure that Sadila has um, first through its linguistic data, which is uh, monolingual, uh, corporate, multilingual, corporate, um, uh, multimodal data sets that we have in context, and uh, the semantic uh, um, and WordNet uh, node that has developed a lot of resources. We think, and I'm motivating, that we do have the basics that we require for such an exciting uh, uh, project that I'm thinking using deep natural language understanding can actually create uh, novel computational models that this area has not uh, seen. So this is what I want to posit as an aspect of our future collaboration uh, using the affordances of artificial intelligence, machine learning even, and uh, deep learning. So in conclusion, it has been argued that Sadila is an important research infrastructure in the areas of HLT and NLP documentation. It creates, it manages, it distributes these resources for the 11 official languages and therefore contributes in a special way to the intellectualization of these languages so that they can be used with the necessary infrastructure and technologies across the academy. It is responsive to the imperatives of the 4IR, which is um, the creation of data sets for less resourced languages. It advances the scholarship of DH through the colloquia series and its flagship escalator project. The escalator provides a vehicle through which to address the scarcity of computational resources for South Africa's official languages, thereby enhancing a novel way of intellectualizing these 11 official languages. Through networks with 
for instance, uh, Netext, more work on computation and data analytics that is responsive to the needs of the academy can be achieved through uh, collaboration between ourselves and Netext. I thank you, Diabo. Yeah, <clears throat> Professor Kumalo, thank you so much for the fantastic introduction to, to Sadilar, its uh, mission, its vision, and all the fantastic things that, it, uh, that it's doing. And, uh, and thank you for mentioning a few times NITEX and all the potential for collaboration. We are, we are really looking forward uh, to that. Yeah. But I don't want to steal the job now of, uh, of Juan. Um, I, and, uh, and I see there is one uh, question in the, in the Q&A. And um, Juan, I, I leave it to you. And, yes. and please encourage the participants to raise their hand and I can give oh, them yes. the, the, the right to speak. No problem. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, the first question we've already answered, um, that was a question from uh, one of the attendees that asked whether we have links with Masekane. Masekane is a very interesting um, group that uh, also focuses on low um, or under-resourced languages. Um, let me see. Sorry, I struggle to type and, uh, and speak at the same time. But I've added a link to their website uh, in the chat. And they are you know, African-wide and also work on... Uh, on, in terms of the NLP community. And at this stage, uh, Salah does not have it like a full MOU with them, but uh, they have been part of a workshop that we've organized this year on language documentation. And some of our researchers has all, have also collaborated uh, with them on projects. And I hope also as part of the escalator that we can approach them early next year to also see how we can integrate um, some of uh, maybe the colleagues that go through the escalator program also into their community because in the end it really uh, the strength i think going forward with these type of activities is really in the networks uh, that we can establish and then the second question that i see there is is it too late to join the empower node no it's definitely not um the uh, slack channel that's available for the escalator project um, is open to anybody at any time the uh, empower track will run um, up until march next year and there will be an uh, additional um, um additional uh, specific activities that will be um, um, afforded around that currently the main activities took place as part of a national women's month and uh, the next round of activities will take place early next year so please be on the lookout for that i'll also share the slack link and our twitter link in that uh, particular question right so let's see let's see there's then one additional answer after that or question uh, do you facilitate uh, collaboration with neighboring countries um, that also use languages used in South Africa, such as uh, Setswana? Um, I think before I take a stab at that, uh, uh, Lanka, would you like to maybe link uh, that specifically, I think, with the African Union? I think there's possibilities around that. Yes, um, thanks, John. And 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 uh, you see, uh, I think the, our, our 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 audience have 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 seen you tackle first two questions. In fact, uh, I should add that uh, in case they didn't hear, uh, Prof. Francesco introduced you as our director of operations. In fact, uh, you are the main driver of the escalator project, and that's why uh, some of this information is in, on your fingertips. And I'm glad that you have already provided the feedback uh, to, to our participants uh, on those two questions. Um, in terms of uh, facilitating collaboration with neighboring countries that use languages used in South Africa, such as Setswana, um, so the African Union has what is called the vehicular cross-border languages, and Setswana is a vehicular cross-border language between South Africa and uh, uh, Botswana on Setswana. And um, there is an active research community that is driven by the African Union, uh, the Academy of, of, of Languages, ACALAN for short, and they have um, interesting um, uh, uh, programs on uh, the lex developing lexicons for Setswana, developing the, the, 
the, the linguistic atlas and um, the developing the harmonized um, orthography dictionaries for Setswana. So there is a lot of activity that is already taking place uh, in that, in that uh, sense between the two countries. Uh, and to a certain extent, uh, Setswana that is spoken uh, in Zimbabwe, although sometimes it is uh, classified as Sesutu, but uh, there is an active uh, cross-border linguistic community that is actually working on Setswana and uh, is using is coordinated by the African Union and I happen to know this as the commissioner of the of the African Union. So in short, um, the Masakane uh, project which is actually pulling uh, resources from young talented uh, computational linguists across the continent actually develops uh, 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 some of the low hanging uh, uh, technologies that are required in teaching and learning and or um, uh, in the development of these uh, 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 African languages. And in Setswana, is, if, you can, if, you, if you look at it, is, can be viewed as a small language uh, in Botswana or in South Africa. But you know, when you look at it as an, an African language uh, through this vehicular cross-border uh, initiative, then you see that suddenly a language that can be uh, viewed as a minority language in one country can uh, be viewed as a big language uh, when it's viewed across the, the continent. So yes, there is a, 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 an active program, linguistic program and a computational program that is providing uh, solutions for the requirements of uh, Setswana, especially the lexicons. And the, some of these lexicons are actually digital. Setswana has one of the best uh, corpora uh, in the continent in terms of its cleanliness, its functionality and um, uh, annotation. That is uh, the work that is being driven at the University of Botswana. So again, be because of this initiative, uh, you can actually access some of these uh, technologies and or tools. How does Sadila assist in making sure that underused African languages, African language materials are used? Is there any strategy in place to ensure the use of such materials? Um, Sadila has a, a very, I kept mentioning, you know, from time to time that we, we actually have uh, not just the creation uh, mandate, or the management mandate, but we have the distribution mandate. So if you go to our, our, our portal, you can actually see those resources that are available immediately. And also those that are available uh, through a particular license or protocol, and you can actually uh, uh, access some of these uh, resources. So we do have uh, uh, resources for most uh, South African languages. Underutilized African language uh, uh, materials, I might actually require you to be a bit more specific about the underutilized African language material, but most material and the mo most languages don't have digital resources. So most of them would not have a corpus, even if it's a, a monolingual general corpus, most of them, they're most likely not going to be having an annotated corpus. But you know, if you go to our resources and to our, to our CTEX uh, node, you can actually check which uh, language you're referring to, whether or not we have an annotated corpus, um, small uh, as it may be, but um, uh, it, it will be available on our corpus uh, repository. Yes, um, I can maybe add to that. I see there's a second question, I think, linking back to the initial question around cross-border languages. Um, I'm also putting that in the chat uh, through a collaboration with the Dutch Language Union. We are also busy um, with a project to create uh, grammars for Klosa and Setswana. And uh, with that project, uh, we also involved uh, academics from Botswana. Uh, to be part of that progress and we really hope that let's say um, the workflow that has been developed for that project and once we completed that that could be made open um, to really allow for generating collaborating on writing these type of grammars that's useful for uh, not just um, linguistic studies but also for a possible uh, secondary education studies um, to also open that up uh, within the African continent. So that's one of the active things that we are engaging in specifically for Setswana. Um, so I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Kale, um, you're also welcome to get in touch um, with us directly and we can also help connect you um, with uh, the project leaders of that grammar portal project.
And then maybe just also regarding the question on how can we, uh, what strategy do we have in place to help uh, to, to make uh, possible for these materials to be used? And that's really, as Langa mentioned, through the Escalator project, we really try to think about ways, how can we structure or layer the type of engagements that we offer for the academic community and interested community members to really take them from a point where this is totally new to them, where you introduce them to the digital space, to where you systematically equip them and empower them to function in the digital space and then later start um, creating and using the tools that is available uh, in uh, working in this environment. So it's really a part of our escalate strategy that we really make sure that uh, we don't sit in a way with a chicken or egg situation, but that we have the resources available on the one end, but on the other end, make sure that we equip researchers so that they can actually utilize the resources. As typically in the academic environment, a lot of the linguistic programs or literature programs do not really focus on any computational elements in the South African uh, environment. So I see there's another question of Langa. Um, I heard about scarce resources in African uh, languages. What are those? Um, uh, what are those, as most of them depends on society, do you think our community societies will accept uh, the project as most students are from the community accepting means, um, using it like going to school every day? Um, I'm not sure I'm reading the, the, the message right. Um, John, if, if you want, we can um, give uh, Timbeka. Oh, I think that, that, that would be wonderful, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, maybe while I do it, uh, Martin um, um, Kanan Mafunda raised his hand and he has already the right to speak. And I will oh, dig the list of participants <laughs> and, and give Timbeka the right to speak as well. Um, right. voila. Yes, please right. go, Martin. All right, thank you, Prof, for a nice presentation. Um, I, I think um, you have exposed me to a lot of resources that I was not aware of. So just a, a, a quick question. Uh, in terms of um, uh, the, the, the field of natural language pro, uh, processing, are there any e efforts from the department uh, to try and establish some form of collaboration with the social media companies like Facebook so that uh, South Africans can also benefit directly in terms of, you know, like trans translation uh, and so forth. Because um, as far as I know, um, you know, when you try to translate something uh, on social That's media, the, the translation is not good. So are there any efforts from your side to, uh, in terms of trying to make uh, uh, some form of collaborations? Um, thank you very much, Martin, for that question. Um, collaborations, uh, as I said, are and, and, and a work in progress. Uh, all the time we're looking for synergies with institutions uh, that have um, a mandate uh, similar to ours. Um, but what we, what we are focusing on is to developing these uh, resources. So you're talking or you are insinuating a machine translation system. And we are actually, uh, we have a node <coughs> that is actually uh, focusing on developing machine translation systems. These actually depend on the data or data sets, and these data sets must be uh, clean, and these data sets must be processed in such a way that they can actually enable the process of developing these uh, machine translation systems. Um, if we were to develop, you know, a very good uh, 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 machine translation system, and we do, by the way, we have Ash the Ashima to, uh, I think it's version what now, John? Um, yes, we're going to the next phase where they are rolling it out to um, all of the languages. So uh, hopefully within a year, there will be machine learning systems um, or machine translation systems available for all the official languages of the country. Or for all the 11 official languages of the country. And again, 
these, these, they get more and more efficient when the users, um, the translators that are doing translation work, and we encourage them to actually use these tools, uh, use their data sets on the tool in order for the tool to get better and better. The more uh, you use it, the more the translation uh, um, uh, tool becomes more efficient. So the translation system, we are focusing on developing the translation systems themselves. In terms of synergies, as long as there are companies that are open to those synergistic uh, 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 those synergies, we will take those opportunities um, and, of course, see what uh, uh, Sardilla derive from that kind of uh, relationship. But remember, our mandate is to not just create these technologies. It is to manage them. It is to distribute them. They are used is the ultimate prize. And to link that to the question that I had earlier, I think uh, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm thinking about use or uptake by the communities, the use means is that uh, technology uh, useful for the, for the purposes of you know, maybe learning, for the purposes of communication, uh, like our, our WeatherMed uh, application uh, that translates uh, text between uh, speaker and, 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 and do, it's two, the two speakers, the doctor and the patient on COVID-19. And again, it used COVID-19 data set to actually generate that uh, uh, speech to text uh, technology. It uses data, it can be functional because uh, it is uh, uh, impactful, because it is translatable. The community can actually take up the, the tool and use it. So um, as long as we achieve that, that is the down end translational impact of that particular technology. Um, Sadila and indeed DSI would be very happy if our technology, uh, the technologies uh, get that far. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I think then if I haven't lost count, it's in Becca, you, you are next. Um, okay, no problem. Thank you so much uh, for the platform. So my... Sorry, sorry, I did a mistake. Um, <laughs> this Tembeka is back? I think Tembeka is back. I'm not sure okay. what happened. <laughs> okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, clearly. Yes. Yes. Okay, so my question was about uh, the uh, in terms of developing this system, and I was talking about the society and the communities. Just because of even if uh, we promote these languages with these African languages, um, a society plays a huge role in terms of accepting those things. Because at the end of the day, they are the, they are children of students. They come from these communities and they influence these communities for these learners to to learn and other things. So, aren't we going on a wrong road just because of we can promote this uh, system and other things, but do our community accept those things and use it? And most important thing we mustn't uh, ignore that African languages have those cultural bases in terms of their languages. So if their culture and doesn't accept those system, are we going on the right path in terms of developing the system or just going back to the communities? Like what do we need to promote these languages? Just because of other languages, uh, then they don't have that skills. It's just that the community don't accept those things. Like it's a Zulu. It's a Zulu have a lot of resources. Uh, most of uh, our South African speak is Zulu and it's easily adaptable. But the problem is that they don't accept the data that they use. Like uh, you can develop uh, those lexicon from Latin culture, develop those things. You can then develop those things. But at the same time, they are not utilizing those words, those lexicon that are developed every day just because they don't accept it. They just adapt what they know. So are we going on the right way in terms of creating those systems? And then which ways are we going to mandate them to make sure that the communities accept those systems? I just want to hope everyone is understanding me. <laughs> yes, I do understand you. Okay, so you're speaking to two very important issues. Um, uh, you're developing technology and resources uh, uh, like your terminologies, specialized terminologies for Isi Zulu for use in 
um, and business in, in, in the academy. And then you have um, uh, the society, the generality of the society that require also a set of resources, a set of tools, and uh, there's a disjuncture between what the society needs and what the uh, um, the department um, is is developing for for that particular society. Okay, so I want to uh, disentangle uh, both your your very important contributions. So when you want to develop a language for purposes of teaching and learning, research, science, innovation, uh, trade, and commerce, you are developing a new type of language. Um, you know, just like when you're developing uh, a language for law. You know, right now we are speaking English language, but if if a lawyer were to come here and was addressing a specific legal question, he would speak what is called legalese, you know, a type of English that is legal, that is focused on addressing a, a type of uh, topic, uh, case or whatever in law, at law. Okay, so we, you will find that you do have English, but these Englishes are different given the situation, the scientific situation, uh, the, the specialized situation. I've given you an example of legalese. When a doctor is talking to me, a doctor tries to break down their, 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 their medical language so that I, as a lay person in medicine, can understand. And when he's talking to another doctor, when he's talking to a, a, a nurse in the hospital, when he's talking to a para, uh, a medical uh, uh, personnel in hospital, they speak a type of English that makes them understand very quickly and precisely what it is that they are conveying, they are communicating. So again, that's another type of English. It's still English. So when we are developing Isi Zulu, for academic purposes, we are not developing Isi Zulu for speech in M Tuba Tuba or Wakangala Mankengan. No, we are developing it for speech in an academic setting for in order for that class to carry the academic rigors that are required of that class in Isi Zulu. So that's what uh, Pansal will be doing. That was the Department of uh, Arts and Culture will be doing. That's what Sadila will be doing in the intellectualization effort. When we go to issues that are specific to communities and we want the communities to get technologies that aid them in their day-to-day -day, uh, lives, then Sadila will have to actually do a field trip to go and check the needs assessment of that community and develop a technology resource for that particular community so that that, that resource is responsive to the needs of that particular community. I'll give an example. At Sadila right now, we are talking to all the 26 different universities and tell you they have different needs. They have different requires. We are, we are sharing, we're telling them we have the capacity to develop this technology or that technology or to assist in, in this area or that area of specialization. But when we get there, we listen to them so that whatever our solutions uh, that are derived from that conversations meet the needs of that particular uh, institution. They are not going to have the same needs and our solutions are not going to be uh, the same for all the 26 uh, universities. So that is an approach that actually listens for, for to, to what the clients, what the, 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 the partner requires in order for the solution to be tailor-made for the requirements of that particular uh, client. So you are right in both instances and I think uh, what is happening right now is that there is an assumption that the language UKZN launches a dictionary of legal terms, it is assumed that it is a dictionary of Isizul. No, it is a dictionary of legal terms. It's for students and lecturers and professors in Isizulu legalese. Uh, when we, de when we, de we develop an Isizulu dictionary, it's it Zulu, a general dictionary. It is for a e e community, Isizulu. Nizawatola na mate mo mparati nenzela uli molso jinsu anga kona kuleso stazamazu. So the, the audience is the key. So the tool mm -hmm. is targeted at the needs of that particular target user. I hope I have explicated it uh, for you, uh, Tembega Khadev. Oh, okay. No, so no, much. no. 
no you you did uh, explain it uh, like better just because of uh, you did explain all the bases and other things and you did explain the mutual intelligibility and other things of the language uh, and i do understand it very 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 well and uh, even though i know they arise but i know in terms of it's like in translation if you are translating for a certain people if i translate for maybe for people who are in economics. So sometimes the word is there, but just because of the context, the ways that I won't use just because of, even if they are there for those, uh, the, uh, for their specific, uh, maybe genre or something, it's fine. But at the same time, what if I don't use it just because of the context and other things? So I do understand it. And uh, I know most of the important is how we utilize those things and how we utilize in a certain context. So I do understand it, but at the same time, you know, in terms of research, you always have more questions and more questions, but it's it's fine. I, I, I'll, I'll email most of my questions and other things and share. Thank you so much, Sumbeka. Um, then I think we will, moving into our last um, uh, oral question, uh, Noma Kozana, um, could you uh, please share your question? And I see there's one question from Zingi still. Um, then we should be able to finish in the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. Uh, Noma Kozana, you're you welcome. You very yes, thank you very much, Joan. Uh, I'd like to know uh, how can we access uh, the, the, the resources available? Because most of the time, when I want to use academic uh, 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 literature or academic resources, I found that they are not written in Isitosa, they are written in Isingesi, and Isingesi is English. And sometimes it takes longer to use a uh, Google Translate. And you find that there are some uh, lexicons that are too borrowed, yet there are words in Isitosa that could uh, give a very academic concept for such. And sometimes even the concords are missed in that translation. So that's why I was very happy when I was told that Ashmatu, they have gone beyond a, a certain level of producing it. And my question is, where can we get that? Because I think through interaction with such tool, we can be able as academics as well as students be able to uh, enhance it to a better tool. And then another question which I posted was that I've been interested in knowing the curricula on human, uh, human languages technologies and to know what is the entrance uh, level for students because I'd like my easy course students to enroll for such so that they can be able to develop the language and use the language through their own understanding of these technologies rather than somebody from somewhere will be able to teach them and then move away and leave them without having the ex expert knowledge of uh, such a human language technology. Thank you. Thank you, Noma Kuzana. Um, I'll can maybe answer that in part. Um, would really encourage you to reach out uh, to through us uh, through the escalator program because there are we will be launching an educator track uh, next year as well that will specifically look into uh, resource and training material that will be open uh, for use and integration into different curriculas to at different levels as well so you're also welcome to directly reach out on that matter with us uh, yes thank you very uh, much John. yes please do reach out on on, on, on those resources that you, you, are, you are asking about. Um, uh, you can point it to your, your specific uh, requirement. Um, Wonderful, and then I think it's our last question for the day possibly, and that's uh, Zingi. Uh, you're welcome to um, uh, ask your question. I think you might just still be muted, okay. there you go. Hello. Hi, afternoon, everyone. Um, I I think if we if we were in a face-to-face -to -face, um, uh, meeting or seminar, you would see me jumping from my from the seat 
uh, because everything that U Prof has uh, alluded to affects uh, the work that I'm doing every day. And I've been stuck with some of the work, don't even know what to do. Uh, if I, uh, I can just briefly tell me, I'm in a, a dictionary making uh, environment and uh, I'm based at, uh, at Forte and um, for Isikosa language. And we are busy here with a lot of Ikopara, which we, we, we can't uh, access it to make it online. As uh, Uprof has already said that uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, has, has come with its challenges. To, to us and even to the learning, teaching and learning situation as a result that made us to change our, our minds and the way we do things, uh, to take our hard copy dictionaries, to throw them online. And um, I've just joined uh, this uh, institution and I found out that there is only one one software that is being used and it's not easily accessible. And I'm stuck now, kind of trying to get uh, the, the, the information or the copra into the software so that we can convert it and make it a, a dictionary in a very quick and uh, accessible manner. Um, but now I found out this thing is there. It's just that the problem is everyone is working in his or her own little corner, trying to feed himself maybe with poison, which will make him die one day without achieving his or her own um, dreams of developing the languages. So whatever has been said here by U, U Prof, it's uh, so overwhelming. I don't even know whether to have a question or a comment, but it's just that, uh, uh, I've, 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 I understand and I've, I've been told that uh, we can easily get e e conducts so that we can be able to, 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 to get e e e assistance because there is lots of research as well in the work that we do, even though we do dictionaries, which is the product, but the process of making the dictionary is research. So we find that we don't have the capacity as well to, to develop or to, to make those um, research papers towards the journals because we're busy trying to make the production. So if we can get such a assistance on the research part as well, and to convert those, we've got lots of e classic books uh, that have got lots of e terms, some of them not even used today which won't get their way to our dictionaries if they are not converted into electronic uh, media, as well as the, the local, that is the language that people speak every day. Language is not static, it's dynamic. People will talk uh, of words and give e items, words uh, that we don't know, and some of them vanish without being captured because they are no a specific people who are there to capture those words so that they can add onto the languages. There's always a complaint that our languages are, are not to the same power, like even teachers say, we can't teach maths or science in African languages because there is no terms, there are no, there is no vocabulary. Whereas we speak every day because the teacher, you will find the teacher in class teaching students using easy course trying to explain a scientific term. But now when we get to the books or the online, as Unama Kosazana, the previous speaker has said, we can't get such resources or we can't get such information in the African languages. So I um, think uh, your uh, uh, institution will be able to, to assist us a lot. And we are here. We will try and raise our hands every time uh, especially if we know, thank you very much for making us aware that you are there guys and you are able to assist us in developing these languages because the dictionaries we are making, we don't want to make general dictionaries every day, but we would like to have 
subject specific technical dictionaries, those dictionaries that will speak of scientific terms and which can be used in universities as well at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Zingi. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, Vlanga, a final comment on that? Um, I, I think one of the areas that, that colleagues can definitely look out for is uh, the uh, soon to be launched uh, dictionary application. That's also an open source application that can be adapted for all languages and our uh, dictionary platform that we also expect to launch uh, maybe later the year that will mm. also give access to a lot of the terminology that has been referred to now. Uh, mm. Prof. Langa, any last comments before we close uh, uh, of the session? Thank you, John. And actually, my, my comment following Zingi's uh, comment was that I was going to point her to, to, to that information that we, we, we are developing a, uh, a dictionary software that is going to have um, uh, uh, that we make available and we are going to manage it so uh, you can take it and adapt it for whatever uh, project specific uh, usages and we are going to be available to support uh, them going forward. Um, I think uh, we, we, we to, just to summarize, um, I, it, the motivation has been to actually locate Sadila as a key uh, research infrastructure in developing technologies for for African languages, um, again, in the context of um, uh, our, our very rapid changing uh, informa information uh, society, um, and, and that is fueled by uh, technology and interconnectedness. And as you can see from the discussion, uh, there, there is a potential for even more uh, technology development going forward for African languages. But I want to again uh, uh, go back to uh, what I said in the in the in the talk that we really need to focus on deep natural language understanding because it is going to actually talk to something something that someone asked about. How about our culture? Uh, the, the, the deep natural language understanding that will require the affordances of uh, AI and deep learning that uh, is the, the speciality of uh, uh, NITEX is that we want a culture away and knowledge rich computational model that is going to understand human language in a precise and semantically deep way from just individuals to entire uh, speech population, from language development to language change from individual speech utterances to an entire speech uh, uh, process. So we are looking at actually augmenting what it is that we are seized with right now as Sadila and actually using the affordances of AI and uh, deep learning to say, let us actually push the frontiers and see what it is that we can develop by way of novel computational tools. And this is what I am positing to Prof. Fran Prof. Francesco uh, as a goal uh, of our relationship going forward, a goal of our synergy, because we want to push the, to push the frontiers. Already, uh, the, uh, the context of uh, the fourth industrial revolution um, beats us to, do, to take that direction. And we are saying the affordances are there. We do have the, 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 the data sets limited as they may be, but we are going to uh, drive their valorization and see if we can actually uh, get to those new and in, impressive uh, models uh, in the uh, area of computation. I want to thank you colleagues. I want to thank you, Prof. Francesco. Thank you, John, uh, for, 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 for steering the, the talk. And of course, uh, thank you uh, participants for uh, coming to the talk. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I, I also need to thank uh, you, Professor Kumalo, for an excellent uh, presentation. And um, you saw that um, the, the, the participants were very active <laughs> in the discussion, which, which really means uh, that there is a huge need, um, not only for this kind of talks, but also for, uh, for collaboration in, 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 in the topics that, uh, that, 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 that you proposed. Yeah? And, uh, and I can assure you that as NITEX, we will be very, very happy to uh, to engage in with, with yourself and then maybe with some of the participants and uh, and um, and work towards uh, uh, propagating yeah the, the the tools and the resources that uh, that your institutes offers uh, so that uh, they reach the people that um, that will actually use them yeah with, with, with a big profit yeah 
Excellent. And then um, let me thank also Joanne. Thank you very much for moderating the, the, the questions. I really much, uh, much appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Ilya, for being the, 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 the co-host. And, and, and thank you very much for the, for the participants. Yeah? And um, the, the one lesson that I learned today is that we need to make an effort to, to offer more, more talks to, to, to kickstart this kind of, of, of discussion and, and, and let people engage uh, with, with, the, uh, with the institute that, uh, that our Department of Science and Innovation uh, gives us the possibility to, to run. Yeah? And they are running because they need to be useful to everybody. Yeah? So um, it's, it's very important for us to, to, to get uh, everybody's feedback so that we know that, that, that we are doing our job, but we want it to be useful for everybody. Yeah? No, so thank you very much. Then um, with that, uh, I wish you all uh, a good evening. And um, I hope to see some of you again, uh, or all of you again uh, next Monday when we will have the, the, the next colloquium and, and the invitation and the announcement should be in your, uh, in your inbox. So thank you very much, everyone. Please keep staying safe. Uh, we are back to level two, but COVID is still out there. So take always the necessary uh, precautions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, colleagues. Bye. Thank you so much. All the best. We, we stay in touch.